Boris Johnson is playing Las Vegas later tonight, a paid speaker at a business conference at the Bellagio Hotel. Is one of the two certified five diamond hotels in Las Vegas. In between lucrative speaking commitments, the former prime minister has been firing off letters back to the chair of the COVID inquiry, retired appeal court judge Baroness Hallett. And in the ever lurching fortunes of Boris Johnson here in Texas yesterday, one day after he attacked the cabinet office for reporting him to the police over diary entries, which civil servants thought might indicate breaches of COVID lockdown laws, he's today on the same side as the cabinet office. In a flurry of correspondence, it's emerged that Lady Hallett is demanding sight of Boris Johnson's private WhatsApps and diaries from the time of lockdown. The cabinet office has hit back, saying some of what she's asking for would be unambiguously irrelevant. Lady Hallett has said they don't understand the breadth of her inquiry, and she might want to look into matters like whether Boris Johnson was distracted by irrelevant matters when he should have been focusing on COVID. And Boris Johnson's fired a letter off from the United States saying any suggestion that he's trying to withhold private documents would be highly prejudicial. He's also furious about the lawyers the Cabinet Office sent him to help with his submission to the COVID inquiry, who then passed on material which has ended up in police hands. The civil service have gone to the police without even engaging with Boris Johnson's lawyers, who I thought it would have been at the very least a common courtesy, if not some sort of requirement to do so. So I think it's very bizarre what's going on here. I think a lot of people are starting to ask questions about what is simply, you know, what is it people have got against Boris. Well, this inquiry is showing us that anything to do with Boris Johnson ends up being a complete mess. But on the substance of the issue, there's no point in setting up an inquiry like this and then having a standoff over information. The inquiry has to have access to the information it needs. And that means to me the government will have to give the inquiry the information it's asking for. The row suggests a robust inquiry and big running story to come, just as the government hopes another one has gone away. This morning, letters flew around, settling Number 10 hopes, the saga over whether Suella Braverman tried to use officials to get preferential treatment over a speeding offence. In a letter to the Prime Minister, the Home Secretary acknowledged, I sought to explore whether bespoke arrangements were possible. Some people have construed this as me seeking to avoid sanction. I deeply regret that my actions may have given rise to that perception, and I apologise for the distraction that has caused. Rishi Sunak replied that though she hadn't breached the ministerial code, a better course of action could have been taken to avoid giving rise to the perception of impropriety. In Suella Braverman's Hampshire constituency today, mixed verdicts on their MP. Oh, I think it's a storm in a teacup. Quite honestly. They have to be the best of us, so I think it should be held to the highest possible standards. She tried to get out of it by basically bending the rules. Leave her be, let her crack on with it. I've just signed up for the speed awareness course myself. <laughs> Why does he think his Home Secretary seems to have such a problem coping with points based systems? The Labour leader repeatedly tried to link the saga to the net migration figures coming tomorrow morning and likely to shift the focus back from her conduct to and their the policy. Will be sure. Gary Gibbon reporting. Well, Salia Ahsan is an A&E doctor and filmmaker who lost her father to COVID. She's part of the group, the COVID Bereaved Families for Justice. She joins me now from Cambridge. Thank you so much for coming back on the programme, uh, Salia. I mean, you worked as a medic during the pandemic and you lost your father. So... What happens yes. with this inquiry is incredibly important to you. It's crucially important. And the main point of the inquiry is that we want to work towards preventing a disaster like this happening again. We know that the government and the country was woefully unprepared for the pandemic. And module one of this inquiry is all about preparedness. And if the promise that the inquiry wants to deliver that was instructed and set up by Boris Johnson, essentially, wants to deliver that promise, then we have to get this inquiry right. And that means unredacted messages and all the information that's out there that could be relevant should be made public. 
Absolutely. I mean, you think, how audacious is that, that the Cabinet Office decided to redact vast chunks of, of material and then send that into the inquiry? The instructions are really clear and they are clear for everyone who is invited um, or instructed, actually, to send in information to Baroness Hallett, unredacted material. The inquiry team them, th then themselves decide what, for safety uh, and privacy uh, matters, needs to be redacted. But they need to see the whole law. I, I'm am I, actually, am I surprised that this is happening right now? No, actually, I'm not. And we haven't even started. Mm. The first hearing is on June the 13th. So this is going to be a really interesting ride. Yes, and yet it is, you know, lawyers working for the Cabinet Office going through the papers and the diaries that discover these extra parties at Chequers and elsewhere, apparently. And they then referred this to the Cabinet Office to the police. So, I mean, they are doing their job. You know, they're doing what you want them to do, aren't they? Oh, they are. And I don't think they had a choice. I mean, whilst they were going through the material and found that, goodness knows what else is in there. I, you know, we all want to know what's under the heavily redacted, black marked out uh, content. But yes, I mean, if they didn't, they would have fingers pointed at them because this will come out. I mean, if they are lawyers. They are bound by rules and, mm. uh, you know, professional standards. I don't think they had a choice. And it is so important. I mean, Matt, I was making films and working during the COVID pandemic. I saw up close and personal mm. what was going on. So many of my patients died, died. So many of my colleagues became sick with COVID-19. Um, some of them passed away. And then through filming, during the process of filming, mm. my own father caught COVID right. and died. It's taken, it's taken over a year, you know, it's taken years for some of us to get yet, over this. Some of us will never get over this. I can totally understand that and I, and, I, and I have great sympathy for you, but there are members of the public, many of them, including in Gary's report, who say it's time to move on, especially when it comes to the question of lockdown parties. What do you say? Do you know, that? it's not because it's, it's definitely not. We need to get this right for next time. And, it, it, you know, if you look at all the evidence and if you listen to all the experts, the next pandemic, it's not an if, it's a when. And if we are really serious about getting mm. this right and not having such horrendous numbers and really easy mistakes that were made along the way that cost lives, that cost people dearly, then we have to get it mm. right now. I, I am part of the COVID inquiry. I, I didn't set up the group. I joined the group, sadly. Right. It's a group I never wanted to be part of. Um, but I joined it and I'm grateful that the founders did set it up because we needed a place to come okay. together. And I, the stories that I'm hearing of cases and what went on, you know, this all needs to okay. be heard. It and does. the inquiry is an important part of that. But and it, and it, sorry, sorry, we've run out of time. And sorry. Sally, it, it will be heard. I'm sure it will. It'll just take its time. Uh, Salia Ahsan, thank you very much indeed for coming in the programme.